Hi everyone! Today I'm going to share with you six tips on engaging students in online live sessions. Like many of you, I'm also new to teaching online fully and I'm due to the pandemic, I'm forced to make changes to the way I teach and just like you, I was initially very nervous, um, lost, anxious and kind of overwhelmed to think about how I'm going to deliver my lessons effectively and successfully online. But then I decided to follow Simon's advice and to think about the nervousness as an excitement. So basically, he says that both feelings play off the same string. It's just the way uh, of how we perceive it. So we either let the pessimistic part of the brain to perceive it as nervous or we let the cheerleading uh, coffee-induced part of our brain to think of it as an excitement. So I decided to think of it as an excitement and I try to forget about what can't be done online and get excited about what I can do with my students online. We all know that most of our students are from the Generation Z and we we think of them as the digital natives. But really, do they really know how to learn online effectively? Well, studies have shown that in, um, they might be very good with technology and all, but they have been using media for entertainment and info-related activities, not so much for formal learning. So then, how do we go about engaging and motivating our students in online live sessions? You can't focus on what's going wrong, but I'm sure there's always a way to turn things around to find the fun in whatever that we are doing. So let's get on to find out the first uh, tip. My very first tip is to be human. So as one of our basic needs as human is to connect. So based on the self-determination theory, this is about relatedness, about how we care for and connect with each other. It's about how to make your students feel that they matter in your classroom. So if you look at the master's hierarchy of needs, you will also find the same thing about connectedness and relatedness in love and belonging at tier three. So what I did is to think about how I can connect with my students and how I can make my students feel connected with each other and what I can do to make them take a mental break from whatever that is happening around them. So what I did is to show that I care. Tell them not to give up despite the challenging situations. Tell them that they are not alone and tell them that they matter in the classroom. So there are three things that I do in my online sessions. Number one is to have warm-up activities. In every uh, online session that I conduct with my students, I always begin my lesson with a warm-up activity. Number two is to do collaboration, allow my students to mingle and to make friends with each other by doing group work. Number three if is similar to what we usually do in our physical classroom. Before we start the class, we always do some small talks. So try to log into your online classroom like five to ten minutes earlier to talk to your students to find out about what they like, what they dislike and what's going on in their lives at the moment. Tip number two is to keep things simple. So don't overwhelm yourselves or your students. I know that there are many titles available out there that may be interesting, but try not to uh, use too many of them and get too overwhelmed with it. So there are some tech tools that I've chosen specifically for my synchronous sessions and for checking of understanding, I usually use Kahoot and Mentimeter. For collaboration, I use Jamboard, Quizlet and Bamboozle. I will share with you in another video on how I use these tools for collaboration. And for communication purposes, I've, had, I've got a WhatsApp chat group with my students. Stay within the platform. Now, if you have chosen a particular platform for your online live conferences with your students, be it Zoom, Teams or WebEx, try to explore the features that are already available in the platform, like the chat box. Use it for communication with your students. Um, tell your students that they can ask questions in the chat box. Use the poll function to check your students' understanding. 
and also use the breakout rooms for collaboration and group work. Number three is to have some variety. I know it's just a sound contradicting to the one that I've just uh, shared with you, but this is about creating um, various types of activities for your students. Well, in the asynchronous part of the learning is usually individual. So in the synchronous session, try to create pair work or group work for your students so that they can stay engaged and connected with each other. You can also use a variety of activities with webcam or mic or webcam and mic. But this really depends on the connectivity and bandwidth, uh, not only for your students, but also for yourself as well. Try to include some activities with movements. It's rather tiring and, and strenuous to be staring uh, at the screen and be seated for a long period of time. So try to include activities where you allow your students to get up from their seat, uh, to do some movements, like to take a look outside and uh, to share with the friends what they see outside. Do remember to have breaks. Um, like I mentioned just now, it can be quite taxing and strenuous to be staring at the screen for a long period of time. So do try to take breaks in between your sessions. Number four is to develop learner autonomy. By this, I mean to provide choices, allow your students to choose the type of materials or sources that they want to learn the content from. Um, it can be through videos, it can be through articles, it can be through images. With that said, um, allow your students also to have a choice of how they want to demonstrate their knowledge or the skills that they have acquired. You can um, encourage your students to use videos to demonstrate their knowledge or to, to create an infographic poster or even to, to create an image. Number five is to have a clear plan. Just like how we always do with our normal lessons, Always have a lesson plan. Think about how you're going to conduct your live sessions. Once you have your plan, do inform your students of your plan so that they know uh, what, they're, what they're supposed to do in your session. I am an advocate of flipped learning. So at the very beginning of the semester, I've already informed my students that my sessions will be all uh, conducted uh, in a flipped manner. So I will assign tasks for them to do to complete in the LMS. And when they come to the live sessions, they should complete the assigned tasks so that they have some basic knowledge of what we are going to do on that particular day. So these are brief during the first class of the semester. I explain to them the responsibility as a student that they should go through all the learning materials that I put for them in the LMS. So with this, they are then more prepared for my online sessions and they are more willing to share their thoughts, to ask questions, and they are more engaged. I get a better participation. Um, students are more active when they are in my online live sessions. Number six is to experiment and reflect. Be brave and take that step. It's always difficult um, to take that first step, I know, but just do it. If you do not, you will never know. You will never find out what's on the other end. By saying that also, um, remember to reflect, use deliberate practice, to think about your lesson, think about what went well, what didn't go so well, and how you can improve it in the future. So really, we are all thrown into this pandemic. We are all thrown into this um, remote teaching. So it's a matter of survival of fitness. Is that so? Well, if you look at Charles Darwin's quote here, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one that is most responsive to change. So to me, I think it's not the survival of the fittest, but the survival of those who are versatile and those who are adaptable. You definitely cannot go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending for yourself and for your students. I've always lived with this quote, when you ask me to jump, I say, how high? Therefore, if you are offered a seat on a rocket ship, don't ask what seat, just get on. 
So that's all the six tips from me. I hope it's useful for you in running your online sessions. Thank you very much.